What's going on everybody? It's Kevin with Custom Night Vision. Uh, this week's video is a quick overview of the BMVD 1431 Mark II. We are the exclusive distributor of this housing uh, here in the United States. We sell the Canadian version. Why this is beneficial, uh, the Canadian version is QC'd in Canada before it's exported and shipped here. And we QC it again when it arrives here. We offer this device with three different tube types the Elbit L3 and Photonis tubes. So we have kind of an option for any price point um, or any customer demand. There's features and benefits to each one of these tubes. So we like to build a system for everybody or we can build a system for everybody. It is custom night vision. If you want a BMVD with Photonis tubes, L3 or uh, Elbit tubes, we can build that for you. The 1431 has a built-in IR illuminator. It can be activated by depressing the power button two times in quick succession, like that, a one, two, and a red indicator light will come on inside the device that will let you know that the IR illuminator is on. To turn it off, the same procedure, two quick taps and quick succession, will turn the IR illuminator off. Another feature included with the 1431 is it has an auto off function when it's in the upward stowed position. The goggle is stowed in the vertical position. The unit should turn itself off. I have found through much use of different binocular housings that this isn't always uh, functional with really any goggle. So just keep that in mind. If there's a bright light overhead, you might wanna turn the device off, but it, it does have that feature built inside of it. You can actually deactivate this feature in a similar way that you activate the IR illuminator. Instead of two quick clicks, it's actually five. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, red light will blink through the light pipe inside the device and tell you that you have turned that feature off. To reactivate it, it's the same feature in reverse. Five quick clicks, light pipe illuminates and tells you that it acknowledges your request and uh, it will reactivate the stowed feature. The 1431 does not have a memory per se. So if you have, if you turn the device off and you have the gain at a certain level, when you turn it back on, it's not going to automatically go back to that level. Or if you have any of those uh, settings we had mentioned previously, uh, turned off or on, it's gonna default to maximum gain, um, IR illuminator off and the stowed position auto off function would be active. We also offer a battery pack to be used in conjunction with the 1431. Um, if you've ever seen a PVS 31 Alpha battery pack, it's almost exactly the same. It uses four AA batteries, as you may be accustomed. It has an IR strobe uh, incorporated with a switch in the same place. It uses the same style Fisher connector, and it actually installs in the same position. Something to note, when the battery pack is installed, you will not get the same range of articulation. The pods will still extend out, you know, 90 degrees from their normal position, but you will not get the full articulation back towards the dovetail like you may be used to. Not really a big deal when you're using them, um, but it is something to note. The battery pack offers obviously extended runtime. The big benefit to this battery pack over the L3 option is the price. I think these sell for a little less than $300. They include the, the power cable, uh, whereas the L3 version of this, I typically see sell for around $1,000. Just like the 31 Alpha, the 1431 has IPD stops that are adjustable with thumb screws. So to control the inner pupillary distance, one would put these in the operation position or in front of your eyes and turn these thumb screws until they had the desired uh, inner pupillary distance. That way when you bring them up and bring them back down, the diopters are in the same location. They have a lot of adjustment from super narrow to super wide. It's 
might be interesting to some of our Giga Chads out there. Is your eyes super far apart. So that's a nice feature to have. There's no additional hardware you need to add. It's already installed on the device, ready to use. From right to left, we have the Photonis Echo Tube. This is a great tube option. Uh, very well priced, works great in highlight environments. I recommend these to a lot of law enforcement officers or anybody that's going to be utilizing their night vision or operating in you know, almost exclusively urban areas. They do not work the best in extremely low light environments. Um, the woods far away from urban areas where there's no ambient light or you have a thick canopy, but they, they definitely have great features, uh, great performance for the money. Next option, the middle tube here is an Elbit XLSH. These come in different varieties, different qualities, but for the most part, uh, we do a lot of the XLSH tubes. We've had really good luck with these. We get them in the 10160 or the 11769 variant, meaning with or without the pigtail. We can wire these up to utilize manual gain in either configuration, but this is probably the best bang for the buck in my opinion. They're priced very well, they perform very well, especially if you find a really clean set. Next up, the L3, the tube that everybody wants, the filmless white phosphor. These tubes are wonderful. They have the highest performance out of any of the tubes on the table. They're also the highest price tube. These really shine in extremely low light environments, so the areas that you wouldn't want to use a photonis tube, you're going to want an L3 filmless tube. Um, they also can be a little bit much on the eyes if you're in extremely high light environments. But as we discussed earlier, we can wire these up to utilize manual gain in the 1431 housing. So when you're in those extremely high light or light saturated areas, you can turn that gain down and really get the most out of the tubes. This is my preferred option the L3 tubes with manual gain as you have a high performing device in all lighting conditions. Moving on from the three different tube types, we have two different optic options available. Uh, the first one being the Carson Milspec glass. This is a very durable, very high performance glass. The only really downside of it, I would say is the weight. Um, the overall size of the objective lens is slightly larger than the RPO. That brings me to kind of the pros of the RPO. The RPO is gonna be around 33% lighter than the Carson glass. It also offers an overall uh, reduction in system size and weight, obviously. We have found that the RPO glass offers a higher gain performance, meaning a brighter image through the diopter. Um, I personally feel like I get a little bit better resolution or contrast to the image in intermediate lighting conditions. I prefer the RPO for firstly because the due to the reduced system size the overall length I like that it makes the goggle shorter as well as the weight but that's why we offer both. So we give the, the end user the option to build out a goggle however they want, two different optic types, three different tube types, you can build your goggle how you want it. We offer the 1431 with or without manual gain. Typically to get an L3 tube with manual gain, a customer would have to buy an L3 factory built unit, which can be great, but it can also leave some to be desired as it is expensive. And I found in my personal experience that the tubes are not typically matched to the level that I would want them matched. A well-matched set of tubes can make a big difference in the end user's experience with the night vision device. With this system offering manual gain in L3 tubes, we not only can save the end user money, but we can get them the same tube performance with higher quality, better matched tubes and zero lead time. Let's take a closer look at the controls of the 1431. This is your battery compartment, obviously. Right above it is the power knob slash gain potentiometer or the brightness knob. To turn the device on, you will hold this down just like a 31 alpha for about three seconds. This will power the tubes on. They are now on. 
to control the gain or to decrease the gain, lower the brightness, we're gonna turn that knob to the left. I'm gonna turn the brightness down, turn it back to the right. I'm gonna turn the brightness up. I'm gonna hold that button for another three seconds, turn the device off. 